working on a, a hectare property up in Yarra Valley, um, on a, a, a putting a forest garden in up there, and that's really good. Um, that's been you know, enormous diversity of, of plants and things, and they have, um, and then yeah, there's a lot of lot of interest in this space, so it's fantastic. And so our our role as a nursery is to try and provide as much diversity of plant material as we can, so people can you know, achieve their dreams and achieve their, their goals, no matter what you want. So plants, okay. What are we, what are we talking about? Um, I was talking about um, native plants. Native tucker plants. Does anybody know this particular one? You just see the little berries just hanging down. Oh, is it? Um, um, so this is it's sort of midgen. Midgen. Berry. It starts with M. Yeah, midgen. midgen. Yeah, it's midgen berry. And they're like a little. And you can see there's a lot of fruit coming on these. There's a few, few different varieties of these. What do they taste like? What do they taste like? Well, this is the idea. That's why I've got it here for who wants to try one. <laughs> this is one of my favourite um, bush tuckers. The plant itself. Oh, that's crazy. Yep. So they get a little bit bigger than this in the garden. And the plants. You can sort of see it's really nice, it's got lovely copper tips. How, good, how tall do they grow? What do you think? It's nice. It's nice, yeah. Um, you know, plant's going to get probably only about that, about that wide. Right, so it's really nice for a native garden, um, or just anywhere, particularly with midgen berry. They produce a lot of fruit. There's a, about three, or different, three or four different forms of them. Astromertus is the botanical name for those people who want those sort of things. There's about three or four forms. We're cultivating them, we're growing them. Astra and or Astro? Astro. 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 So really good as far as just a nice little plant you can sort of fit them in anywhere. And um, that, that works in temperate. I've only known it up in Queensland. No, it grows beautifully. The, the, the local councils have actually planted them in, in the meeting trips yeah. um, down here. So, yeah, really tough. Yeah, good drainage is probably the key, being of the of that family. So, um, but really good plant. Small shrub. Small shrub. Yeah, absolutely. Now this one, this is a lemon scented iron bar. This comes from up north. I'll pass these leaves around. A bit of a crushing smell. Yep. It's mainly used as a flavouring, like a lot of the Australian native stuff is used as flavouring. Um, but you just crush that up and have a, have a smell. Um, you use it more like a uh, bay leaf, yeah. All right, that type of thing. Um, people have been using it in teas and things like that. Whenever I'm talking about some of these plants, always with all new plants, caution, always caution first off. Um, and get, you know, have a look at the, particularly medically, you want to have a look at all the different things. I'm not, I'm, I'm a, I'm a horticulturist, not a practitioner. Is it frost tender? Um, look, I've had them out here now, and we get, we get frost in the nursery. They've been absolutely fine. Well, they might get set back a little bit, but yeah, they, yeah, they yeah, come yeah. up. But even small plants. I'm, I'm, yeah, they're only up north. They only grow to about this sort of height. Yeah. They're like a mallee gum. Yes. Right. So, mold, so I've, I've been coppicing them just okay, to okay. get the foliage. Yeah. So it's nice and beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Flowers. Yeah. Tiny little white flowers. Attracting bees. Yes, bees. Absolutely. No problem. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I tend to think they're in our climate about. Two or three metres at max. They were small, usually. Yeah, really good. Um, we've got some. We've got some. We'll have some new ones. New ones coming on. A lot of this stuff um, um, is we're sort of a work in progress because we, we we'll get these things in, then they sell, and then we get another batch. So, but I'm going to talk to you about stuff that we've got coming through anyway. Um, this is a little acacia uh, from Bayata. That's one of the main seed crops for the Australian acacias. So it's a particularly good one. Grows beautifully down here. Again, small, uh, small wattle. Like most wattles, it's not going to grow um, and live particularly long. 
Um, but a really good, lovely little plant. Um, so that's about three wattle metres. Seed, is it? Sorry? That wattle seed. Wattle seed. Okay. So this is it, which is there's a whole industry forming on that, that and that's one of its main suppliers, the Strimbayata. So it's a really good little wattle. Wattles are also very useful in the forest garden system because they do nitrogen mixing, exactly. So, um, and Just you can use them to chop and drop, if anyone knows that term, where you cut them back pretty solidly after after seeding, and they, they reshoot for a number of years, and you can use that to get more, more um, mulch on the soil. Just a small comment, yep. um, if you harvest it, yep. uh, you have to roast it, yes. otherwise it's poisonous, it's us, it's it. Yep. Yeah. 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 So yeah, a lot of things have got to be cooked. I think mean, I've had people come in the nursery and they go, "Oh, it's an edible nursery. You can eat everything." No, you can't eat everything. You know, need sections of plant, and then sometimes you've got to cook them. Yeah. And so, to, yeah. on the nitrogen fixation, yep. it is uh, is there much research that have been done on that uh, on Australian soils? Uh, there has been a, there has been a little bit. But there's more to be done. Yeah. Because um, it's not automatic now, is it? Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> it is. Even yeah. in deforested areas that have been deforested, say, for 80 years. That would be a different situation. But I would imagine once you start, once you get the biology, in, start yeah. getting the biology in there, mm -hmm. and once you get the plants in there, typically when you've got disturbance of whatever, yeah. Um, the first thing you get in any disturbed regime is typically your legumes. Yeah. They're the first thing yeah. to go through. Yeah. Like after a fire, you get just what all pop up. Yeah, yeah. Because your nitrogen's all gone, yeah. gone. So, yeah. The, so yeah, that's a good way to start yeah. the process going of very quick succession. It's lots and lots of legumes. That could be one of them. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of other legumes too. I typically plant um, things like that. Of course, you wouldn't plant that where it's going to shade out all your other plants. You might want to use something like this. This is a glidetia. Right. Um, you can buy Glavitsias commercially where you've got different cultivars and things like that but they're not really known as a nitrogen fixing tree and they're one of the best ones you can use. They also have lots of other benefits. Um, that one in particular comes from a specimen of a Glavitsia that was growing in Ringwood. It had a trunk on it this wide and was demolished and removed because they wanted to put some townhouses there. But I managed to get some seed and it had a, this one in particular had a very straight trunk to about, ooh, about 10 metres and then it started to form a canopy. So a timber tree, really good timber trees, which we don't think of. Uh, so glibitsias have the other advantage where they're being deciduous, very small leaflets, they decompose very rapidly into the soil um, and you have it in their nitrogen fixing as well, then they give you seed pods, the seed pods are also extremely good for stock, all right, so fodder, really good there, um, basically um, directly proportional to oats as far as the um, goats, sheep, right. not so much the cows, if you've got cows you've got to actually munch it up so they can, the cows can digest it. What about like kangaroos? Kangaroos, I, I don't know, don't know, don't know, but yeah, certainly the um, the non-indigenous herbivores, not a problem. They love them, absolutely. They, yeah. And so they're particularly good. And look, as an emergency food for us, also particularly good. Uh, so they've got a lot of different uses. I'd like to see them on the hillsides over here rather than just grassland. Because you can grow your grass and have trees as well. And you're going to get a double whammy. But we're not very good at thinking like that, the farming community. We need it, to do the experiments, so we need people to do this, get it down, do it properly. It, is it indigenous to Australia? No. <laughs> no. So well, you have to yes. inoculate, yeah? Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Typically. So you just use your general, um, like a lupin inoculant. Yeah. For like, that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Quite often you don't. I've I've planted them and, and no problem. And. Even in the pots, I tend to find the stat nitrogen fixing in the pots without additional um, adders or anything. So yeah, so that's sort of your top layer stuff, if you like. Um, any questions on that? Yeah. Do you use the species here, or do you use like stuff? I use I use whatever whatever's appropriate for the position I'm I'm growing. 
Yeah, for these ones, yeah, as a as a seedling in a because it's going to get fairly big if the if the conditions are good. You uh, you'd only plant that if you've got a decent enough area. Or, yeah. yeah, or it's a one single tree. Yes, they can do. Yep. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Appropriate. Appropriate plant. Yeah. You're designing the system, so well, you're in charge. Well, yeah, because we are we, we our our forest was sick for stocking it for a long time, and I have found that that's been really Who's fighting? Yeah, I just buy just the horses with the eyes. I think again we need to do and select more cultivars for our particular uses, and not just ornament ornamentation. I think overseas they're doing all those experiments, but of course you can't get um, there. Um, once you've got a particular variety, you actually have to bring it in, and yeah, the government don't like that too much. That's too much fun. So um, again, once we get enough information on what we need, we'll be able to get these to tweak them up. So Gladitia is also a tropical. No, they're not. They're from um, South America, from America. Okay, I've got that. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, okay. Um, honey locust. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. uh, okay. I can't remember which one it is. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Honey locust. What's up? Another good night. We're talking about trees. We're talking about this particular one here. This is, well, does anybody know what this is? It's, yeah, it can't get close to the This carry. is the evergreen oak. Oh, yeah. All right. This is Quercus elix. All right. So it's an evergreen oak. Um, grown a lot. Uh, it's an American oak. It grows. They grow it in a lot of countries. In the France, in France, you can go to some of the really um, manicured gardens, and they grow this one, and they shape it into pyramids. So it's extremely versatile plant. Um, I think they should be grown um, as boundary trees rather than all the pine trees that we see around the place. Actually, because they're going to last a lot longer. You can put the, tru the truffle virus on those too. You actually. can put, you can, if you get the young, young pines, you can get truffle tree, absolutely. Um, sadly, you've got to introduce them pretty much at the same time when yeah. they germinate, or else forget it, it won't happen. Um, but they also have an edible acorn too, for our purposes. So they produce. Um, they're one of the best ones to produce uh, acorns that don't require a lot of um, um, leaching. They're quite edible. I often have these, not often, but I have had them on a couple of years now. Um, um, process them. Typically what you do with acorns, you grind them up, you put them in, the, in, a, in a, a beaker of water in the fridge and you pour off the tannins and do that a couple of times and then you dry it and use it like a flour, and I use it mixed with flour and an acorn and pancakes and that type of thing and breads and things. So it's quite a, quite a useful plant. Hang on, fact, so, so you have to do the same with that one? You've got to do the bleaching with yeah. this Yeah, well. but not as much. But not but as much as some of the other acorns. Gotcha, okay. There's, a lot, yeah, there's not as many tannins in it. Yeah. Um, it's also one of the founding plants of um, um, agricultural systems in Spain and Portugal, oh, where, so they, where grow them, they grow them in the agroforestry system yeah. and they actually run the pigs under Yeah, that's where that ham yeah. comes from. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. oh, so, It's that species? Yes. Yeah. 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 But it's indigenous to the United States. Uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah, baby. I think, yeah. It's, sure. it's certainly grown in... Yeah. Uh, but again, you know, I don't worry about that too much. But look, at the, they're really good plants to grow. They get quite sizable. Oh, they're an oak tree. So they're going to last 200, 400, 500 years. Are they slow growing or fast growing? Surprisingly quick. Okay. Because they're on evergreen. All right, so they grow mm. almost all the time. And they're particularly useful in that regard. But very versatile. But as far as the nuts go, but a good screen plant, if nothing else. Really good. Holly oak is the common name for obvious reasons. Um, but worthwhile. Um, now, so once, you've, once you've got your plants and your trees and things like that, and you still need to put your nitrogen fixes in because you've got to provide nitrogen, nitrogen to your system, plants like this can be very useful. This is a silverberry, or Eliagnus. 
It has, I love it, it's one of my favourite permaculture plants. Um, in permaculture, we like to use plants that we can get lots of, they're going to tick lots of boxes. This particular plant, um, it has really, it's just it starting to come into flower now. It's a really nice perfume flower. So that's one, one box for me. It's also a nitrogen fixer. So it's, but it's, um, it's not a legume. So it has a different association with a different nitrogen fixing bacteria. Um, so it's particularly useful in that regard. It will also grow, and like your legumes, legumes need to be grown in sun or also like nitrogen fix. This will. So you can plant this one, and there's a whole lot of different Eleagnus. Um, some are small, some are fairly large plants, some are trees. <laughs> right at the end, yes, I will. Um, and so they're very useful because they can be there and trimmed as a heat or whatever. These particular ones, um, the Americans call silverberry because they actually do produce an edible berry about that size and the trick to them is you need this one and another cultivar so another one particularly with a slight variegation to the one once you've got both you get so much fruit on these things you've done below them um, and they're quite astringent initially and so you can you pick them and you just your mouth goes like that until they're ripe and then once they're ripe you're okay as soon as the birds go for them you know fine. Um, and they've also got an edible seed which tastes like almond in the seed itself. So you, yeah, good for a um, very good plant for certainly bird attraction, but also if you're using for dams and jellies or eating the out of hand. And typically, kids would like this sort of stuff because they can they don't mind the small fruit. We get um, we get a bit hung up on the small fruit, but these are really good. And, and fantastic the, antioxidant content, all that sort of stuff. And the seed can be eaten raw, or do you have to bake it? Or you have no, to eat it straight off. Heat, no heat treat. No heat treat. Wow. Yeah, just grind it up. It's absolutely fine. Um, in fact, the parrots love it, but they're going for the seed. Yeah. They're not going for the fruit. So, very useful group of plants for the forest garden. Does it taste like a berry, or does it taste like a berry? Yeah, it's, yeah, quite, yeah when, you get the, when you get a good one, yeah, it's, it's, it's again, it's a unique flavour. Uh, but fantastic. It's food. It's, yeah, exactly. And it's, yeah, another berry. It'll probably, someone will probably do some tests on it, it'll become the new wonder berry, you know, um, down the track. And we'll all be millionaires. You know, it's, it's just another one, you know. It's like getting fast now. Mm -hmm. Put a million dollars. Could you please write that down? About Here we that, I think. Silverberry. You look up silverberry. You get it. It's probably the best one. Right. There's a whole stack. Ellie Agnes, so it's... Oh, it's E. Mm. Yes. Okay. So yeah, nitrogen fixing. What else have we got? Oh, let's just jump over a little bit because we've talked about again about nitrogen fixing. So it's important with, it, with in designing a forest garden that we have nitrogen fixers at all levels. So you can have your waffles and your trees like that, and you can live it to up as storage. Bottles don't last forever, all right? so you can have a different variety. Then you've got things like this with your nitrogen fix. There's other nitrogen fixes you can put in with that. Why do I talk about nitrogen fixes so much? Because it's free food, basically. You don't actually have to add it. And, it, and when any forest gardens, any forest system, you'll find it's got they've got nitrogen fixes. And in an established eucalypt forest, you'll have all those little beautiful pea plants with the please call Megan Bacon. Mm. stuff and those sorts of all nitrogen fixers all growing you can certainly use those as well i'm just giving you a, a whole range of different things um so the nitrogen fixing of the silver berry is that akin to the casuarina system or is it a different one different one again oh wow yeah yeah how many are there uh that they know whole, i've got a whole thing of them um of early agnes no of, of nitrogen of, fixing yes. everything from well everything from lichen to the algae and every other like, all a whole, i can give you wow. there's a whole stack of them um it, there's a some information online um by El, eric Holm, um, holmes i did a whole oh, article yeah, on nitrogen fixing because he's nuts he's like me yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. guru this is insane. Now this is another little 
Now this has been chicken, um, been eaten by the chickens, so it's a good fodder for us. This is a nice little legume. Um, it's called a. Um, uh, what? Forgotten. Pea. I was going to say ground up, but that's the other one over here. Um, I'll get the, the name of this. Now this is a really fun little one. You can see that they grow. They'll cover a big area. They grow naturally in England and they grow in the grassland or they grow in grasslands or meadows in wetland or not necessarily? not necessarily, they like a bit of moisture but they also die down and form these massive tubers not massive but they do form a oh, tuber is that food? Is that the that's earth, food. Nut? earth nut pea, that's, that's a one. common name for this one so it's not a climber, that's, that's no a... it's a ground cover so they form these what they call chestnut or chestnut peas and and they actually you have they die down completely, you dig them up, you and you roast them, and they taste like chestnut, funny enough. Um, and they're almost extinct in England because they've been over harvested. But given the right conditions, they are, and again they're really good nitrogen fixing. So they've got a number a number of areas to um, that we can use in the forest garden system. In the middle, right? in, the, in the bush. How do you how do you grow them? This one? Which, yeah. You grow it like you would instead of in a ground cover situation, okay. like in a meadow or those sorts of aspects. So it's a ground cover. So you just grow it like you would a ground cover. When we talk about forest garden systems, it's not always enclosed. Mm -hmm. You can have uh, have areas that are open and can be usable and just ground covers. So these are really so they spread. That, yeah, they spread as you can see. Yeah. They just spread right over an area. No problem at all. Can I make a suggestion? Uh, what I'm doing on my place, right, which is very big, yeah, um, for example that, I, I would propagate it into 40 different plants yep. and I would put it over, say, 10 acres, yeah, in different places. Yes. And then... And then see where, where it goes. And then see where it likes. Yep. And that's where it's going to live. Yeah. And all the others might die. Is that drought tolerance or what? You'll find out. I would imagine it would be to a certain extent. But what its tolerances are, don't know. It's an English plant, so by that, by knowledge, yeah. understanding where it comes, where it's native, to mm. give you a bit of a clue that it's going to be okay. Again, it could work in beautifully with some grasses, with some clover. But that's a lower grass. Yeah, that's a beautiful little pea flower. I've, I grow it actually in a beautiful hanging basket. It makes a fantastic hanging basket. Cascades over and comes out on the sides, mm. and then full flower. Where's it called? Earth nut pea. When you harvest it, is it perennial? It's perennial. So, yeah, you're just, as long as you leave some tubers in the ground, boom, back up again, not a problem. Um, in that plant, in that pot there, you've probably got 20 or 30 tubers. Um, so they're very prolific. How do you know where the tubers are? Oh, they only get dig down about so far and you'll find them. So, yeah, you've got to harvest it. Yeah. Unlike some plants, some other plants you don't need to do that. We'll get to that. There's another plant here, which is this one. Ah. All right. This is ground nut. Yeah, I got it. Um, so this is a fabulous plant. This is a climber. So you, you want plants that are growing different areas. Again, nitrogen fixer. Really, really useful oh, plant. Yeah. Um, this is a staple crop of the American Indian, um, and it produces tubers. Is that the one with round balls that are joined by mm -hmm. by string? Yeah. Yes, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so they form lots and lots and lots of tubers, varying different sizes. So mm -hmm. you eat that. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. what you eat. Roast them up. Yeah, that's what you eat. They can, they can get up to you know, this sort it's of size. Typically once they get to that size, they're a bit woody. Yeah. So, you know, they probably, like probably got more protein those sorts of sweet things. potato, right? But they're a legume. So what you do is you cook them and eat them. Mm. Um, but they've got a consistency like um, <laughs> like beans, basically. Yeah. yeah because and they're not dissimilar. So they need something. Extremely high in protein, <coughs> and so you won't. If you if you were the type of person that sat down to eat three potatoes, you'd probably eat one of those because they're extremely filling. Um, but we haven't sort of fixed them, so they've got a lot of other nutrition in here besides that. But I can go on for hours on that one. I've got a whole stack on that. But as you can see. Look, that's give you an idea. Okay. Oh. Alright. Um, and that was one plant. How old was that oh. plant? Alright. 
That's one plant. Again, will they grow back if you harvest? Yeah, each one of these will produce a new plant. And how old is the plant that you've got? That one? That's first One season. season. That's one season. Gee. So on that. Right. And they like to grow on a wet spot. Oh, so, would that have potentially become a weed? No, they don't produce viable seed. Okay. Um, so they'll stay within the confines. So no, the, the particular cotton bale that we've got, doesn't it's, it's, it, produce, it will produce the odd seed pod, which you can eat as well. But the seeds, it, it never comes through anything. So you're not going to put it in somewhere that's not a crop of crust. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> which is important, you know. Yeah. 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 But um, as you can see, yeah, the way it goes. And it also, it's fairly compact. It looks like a, um, a wisteria when it grows, mm. but it then dies down. So it'll grow up to this sort of size and then die down. So you remove all that material. Would you um, class it as a wetland plant or not? Yeah, it loves, it loves a drink. Certainly likes it. Permanent, likes, permanent, likes, mo not, likes moisture but sun. And what about permanent water? Um, I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't put it in a permanent boggy spot, I reckon that'd rot. <laughs> so I, I get access to water but not over winter. I think, I think they'd rot out. Yeah. So, um, I would grow it if only for the perfume flowers, which are mauve and stunning in their perfume. Mm. Really good. So, a fantastic plant to dry, one of my all-time favourite plants. Okay, so that sort of gives you an idea of nitrogen fixing, in a nutshell. There's a lot of more. Ground nut. Ground nut, or the panicle name for that is Apios. Americana, I think, I remember. Yeah, it is. 